Good day traders, Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Today we're going to be talking about how to win at the game of trading. After 15 hard years of learning and 20 years of trading plus, uh, I will share some of my insights and some feedback from this week and a lot of uh, great questions, a lot of great feedback and then some very interesting comments and feedback. So I've talked about in, you know, there's well over a thousand videos and obviously as time goes on, my trading has evolved. And I hope yours is evolving as I keep focusing every single day on 1% better. And I've talked about all I'm looking for is the red car. We played a game when I was a kid called Punch Bug, Red Punch Bug. And I'm sure many of you, if you're in my genre, You've, pro you've probably played that game as well. But the purpose of me saying that was to emphasize to traders that I am looking for specific setups. In past videos, we've talked about the timing of each session, Asia, London, New York, the high and low of the day, major round numbers, uh, the box sizes, all these different things. Uh, and perhaps I, I leapfrogged a few concepts I talked about getting Peter Brandt's books, Schaubacher, Edwards and McGee. These are all textbooks, uh, aside from Peter Brandt, that were written, you know, back in the 30s and 40s. I mentioned getting Reminiscences of a Stock Operator, the story about Jesse Livermore, a.k.a. Larry Livingston. Uh, this book was written in 1920s. Peter Brandt's book, Trading Commodity Futures with Classical Chart Patterns, is probably one of the most important books that you could get. But again, uh, uh, Schaubacher's book, Technical Analysis, this was the original book that Peter studied and learned from. I've talked about following Peter on Twitter. He's always posting uh, chart patterns. He uses longer term time frames, weekly, monthly. But the important aspects that I grasped from Peter were the classical charting patterns and mastering your craft. I believe that most retail traders are in the matrix. I've talked about this, I've emphasized it, and I believe that each and every day most retail day traders specifically go to the screen looking at charts trying to trade the moves. Uh, I suppose the, the, my perception again of retail is that we see price action moving throughout the day and we want to trade these trends and the moment we get in the market starts to go the other way. Now I've talked about times of day, the types of patterns that I'm looking for and the difference I suppose with classical charting and what I've learned from Peter is that classical chartists work out here on the outside and the retail market trades in here the classical chartist works on the outside now Peter used a term quite often that when he has a pattern there's head and shoulders there's rectangles Ascending triangles. Again, you can go read these books. Uh, I know a lot of people pay lip service to those terms, but Peter works eight to twelve weeks monthly charts. Uh, his consolidations build up over time, and he will be the first to tell you that most of his big winning trades or his year comes from two or three or four big winning trades. Now we all are familiar with the turtles. The turtles. Uh, roughly traded 20 55 day breakouts that was their simple model and and as we know that the traders took many small losses Peter will be the first to tell you he takes many small losses and the reason why that is is that when a market breaks out most breakouts fail but when they go they can keep going and do measured moves of these ranges Again, go study these books. There's nothing new under the sun. So my approach to the market has come from a lot of painful uh, hard knocks and learning for 15 years of banging my head against the wall, doing everything, reading everything, 
doing every type of course and et cetera, et cetera. Now I've talked about my go-to setup is the pump and dump. This can occur over, uh, it can occur on a daily chart over months. Uh, we can get this on a intraday chart. This is my main setup. Sometimes it will be the dump and pump in the reverse direction. This is the same scenario that I will look for on three-day setups on the major pairs. Uh, now there are consolidations. I've talked about three things that markets do. They will break out, pull back, and trend. They will break out in reverse. We call those false break reversals. Or they will trade up and down in a trading range in the matrix because the more you think you're learning, you're actually just regurgitating different things in, a, in the same way in the retail approach to the markets. And this may sound arrogant to some people, uh, and it may sound make sense to people. This is retail, trying to trade these moves each day at Asia, London, and then New York. Somebody said to me, "Is this a you're a, you're a, I've never met a reversal trader that's consistently profitable over time." I'm not sure where they got that idea from. I never said I was a reversal trader. I never said that I only trade in one direction. I never said that I counter trend the market all the time. What I did say, though, was that I have certain setups. And my biggest learning from Peter Brandt was the understanding of consolidations. I've talked about you're either on the inside or the outside. My belief, my, my understanding of the markets is that if you're on the inside, you're in the matrix. And you might, you might be right because you might be at the bottom of the matrix by to the top of the matrix. But my approach to the market is based on these classical charting patterns. Consolidations are where the energy builds up. So my question for you, the tr especially these traders that are sending me, I have, to, I have to say this, this is the only way I can put it stupid emails. What is it that you're looking for? When I get these negative time wasting energy, low pro, you know, low energy, low thinking emails, my two responses are you're you're not putting the time into the right things and you actually don't know what you're looking for. You're in the matrix. Now when I come to the screen, I've talked about the importance of yesterday's high and low. And approaching the beginning of the week, there's a high and a low. Whether it's the previous day, the previous high and low of the week, I can use my daily levels to identify the overall consolidation and also who's in the money. But each and every day when I come to the screen, this high and this low represents a consolidation because we're inside. The market is in consolidation from the previous day's high and low. Coming back to the understanding that most breakouts fail. I've talked about letting the day evolve. There are certain trades that I will look for in the rollover. There will be certain session days that I will look to trade London perhaps if we're at a previous day's high or low in the weekly template because those are the areas where we may get false breaks, breakouts, trend trades, and reversals. But Understanding yesterday's high, yesterday's low, this whole market is in consolidation. As the day evolves, we have a high. And again, I talked about coming for the U.S. session. And we have a low. There's my high. There's my low. Now, this is the matrix to me. So when people email me and they are trading in here, understand this. I can't answer anything about that. I'm looking for trades once, as Peter Brandt says, they complete the pattern at the timing window. Now when we zoom in on this chart, we come to the New York 12 candle window. We have lower highs from the London session and the gap time. We trigger the high of the day. Now, we didn't trigger yesterday's high or low, but we have a consolidation now that has built up over 12, 15 hours. The first 15 minutes breaks out and engulfs the upper candle 
after our false break. We said there are three things that markets do. They break out, they pull back and they trend, they break out, they reverse, marginal new high, marginal new low, and they trade to the other side or they will just trade back and forth in a trading range. And I talked about coming to the New York Open with our high of the day already locked in. If you were not in that first trade off the high, not to say again, so people think, oh, you're just selling the high and buying the low and you're, you're going to get smashed. No, no, no. That's our false break. The market breaks back down inside. The entry is once it's underneath back inside of the high and it's gone sideways into consolidation if you're trading in that first level. New York opens, we get a continuation trade back down through the low of the day. So coming back to our original concept, consolidation, pump and dump. When we look at Wednesday's gold chart, again, at the open of the US 12 candle window, I come to the screen and I just draw up my highs and my lows. Now, again, I just really emphasize this. That's all I'm doing, my high and my low. And then I'll look at the overall pattern of where we're at inside of the high and the low of the week. When we're inside like this, I will look for a session scalp. When we zoom in on the one minute chart, again, we talked about this in a previous video. The hour prior begins the march up three levels. I talked about this just, you know, people keep asking about three levels. You have to go and study each, each setup will be different in terms of the size of the box. We have level one, level two, consolidation, hit the stops. They got the short trader from Asia, the engulfment. We're in a 50 pip range. So I want to see at least 50 pips of fall, high to low. We're above in the, th that's the purpose of the third level. We're up almost 75 pips from high to low. That gives me plenty of space. First entry, once it breaks down and goes sideways. Again, second 15-minute candle. It might be the third 15-minute candle. I'm going to be getting in again, and as it's accelerating, adding positions, or as it's starting to accelerate, adding positions and going to break even on those first few, thesis being in a blow-off move like this. I already have a preset profit target, but, but a, a, a just emphasizing high-low pump and dump. It's not, you know, there's nothing complicated, but I'm working on the outside. I'm looking for this setup. If it's not there, it's not there. I'm looking for the red car. Thursday on gold, I come to the screen and I draw my high and my low. But what I also want to point out is that all the wicks and all the bodies can be contained as a consolidation. Remember, Yesterday's high, yesterday's low, not broken. That's our consolidation. We're inside. So as the day evolves, there are highs and lows. Now, just so people can understand even the opportunities, this is a pump and dump into the close, into the Asian session. This pin forces traders to be buying in the upper level, I talked about space, identify space. This is a different setup. Same thing, just a different style of pump and dump. It's all the same. This is a pump and dump scenario for the end of Asia into the open of Europe session. Pump, get traders selling inside of the high, they take out the stops at the top of the box and you'll notice that the previous day's breakout trade failed. We have volume trapped up top. That means anybody who's long above this area, breakout traders, higher level long, shorter time frames, they're all trapped. This is also a setup because when that is, when we have volume trapped above a previous day's high, the next potential area to target is the previous day's low. Why? Because that's where the money is. So when I come to the screen, this is a box. There's our low. We break out and trade in a range sideways. We have stops above the wicks. Into the open of the US session, we trade down to the previous day's low. We have one push out of the first level, two pushes 
into the previous day's low in a third push with a consolidation down low. This is a consolidation, same thing, rectangle down low, breakout, engulfment, pin hammer, second 15 minute bar for the vertical explosion through the high. The high of London, the lower high where the move started from. This is the dump and pump. Same trade, same setup, previous days low with the understanding now that we have breakout traders trapped at the low of the day. Nobody gets a free lunch. I talked about shorting the high. The second bounce negated that trade. I took the trade off when it did the double bounce and exited with 18 pips. 50 up, 18 down. Now, my, my conviction was that this trade would still eventually fall through the floor, but again, outside of my timing. I Once I had this trade, I also traded oil. We'll show that in a second. I'm not interested in trying to keep trading to get it right. These are trades that I can get into with a reasonable amount of size. Yes, there's a short trade back down. Now, somebody said to me, uh, you're a reversal trader. I've never met anybody who's consistently profitable who's a reversal trader. My response to that is, who cares what you think? And you tell me, what is the trend? Where's the trend? Are you on a four-hour chart, a one-hour chart, a one-minute chart, a daily chart? Uh, how do you define what a trend is? I don't care about trends. I don't care who you've met or what courses or books you've read. This is my approach to the markets with certain setups at very specific times of day. Now, I hope that upsets you and bothers you because those kind of comments and feedback reinforce that you actually don't have an approach to the market. And what I'm trying to emphasize to you today is to get one. One that has an edge. One that you can duplicate and reproduce over and over again. Because you're in here trading this going, how did you see that trade? I'll say it again. I come to the screen one hour before. I draw my high and I draw my low. There was a short trade up here. We have a high. They came down and went vertical in the first 15 minutes. I was in the gold trade. Now you'll also notice that that was a breakout of the previous day's consolidation. So we talk about understanding what the consolidation is. The whole day is a consolidation. Look who's trapped on the opposite side of that consolidation. Breakout traders. The day itself inside becomes a consolidation. This is matrix. This is retail trying to catch all these moves. The smart money is on the outside. So when you say, how did you see that? Well, I'm not sure. What are you looking at? I'm looking for the red car. Now, I didn't take this because this is later on for me. This is later into my evening in the southern hemisphere. But this was a short trade down into the low of the day. I was in the gold trade on this particular day. Remember, breakout traders are trapped. And the timing window, so people will say, why didn't you short it up there? Because I'm not trading at that time. I'm coming to the screen 8 a.m. New York time. I don't, I don't have the perception that I've missed this. Understand this. When it moves earlier, there's a reason why. There's a reason why. The person who shorts this gets it right, but they come back the first 15 minutes. Remember what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the red car. Why I liked oil yesterday. We had a consolidation at the high of the U.S. session close that the market traded lower underneath as the day began. I drew my high, I drew my low. There's a pump and dump at the end of the Asian window. I was not at the screen. I'm not trading that. But what does that reinforce? That reinforces my thesis. The market is trading underneath of the high of the day. It breaks the low. We have a market now that's inside of the high of the week. It's making new lows. Just prior to the U.S. session 12 candle window, I draw my high, I draw my low. And what do I see? I see higher lows inside. And I say to myself, gee, I think I've seen this pattern before. 
Is this the setup? Now, again, I know there's traders that aren't going to like my sarcasm, but I'm really going to keep emphasizing that I'm not the one who's, who's looking for complicated things. I have a setup. It's the red car. I'm looking for that. I'm looking for rectangles. I'm looking for 12 candle window setups at the high, at the low. I want to know that stops have been hit. I want to see the market behave at a certain way in that first 15 minutes. It hits the stops and engulfs the high. I had a great question from a trader yesterday. How did you know to get in on the third candle or whatever? I'm just getting in in here, but when the net, when the, the third 15-minute bar starts, I've talked about time compression, understanding that when a new 15-minute bar starts, it's probably going to move. I'm entering in with my stop above the high of the day because, I, as I said yesterday, if it comes back there, I'm wrong. The high is locked in. My thesis is that the high is locked in. So if it comes up there, I don't add the spread or anything else. I'm, I'm done. I'm out. I want to get in in the consolidation. Once the market's breaking, I can add, 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 add. And as soon as it breaks the low and goes vertical, I'm going to break even on my initial positions. I might take some off. In this particular case, I held it. Why? Because my thesis was creeping trend, making new lows, three levels of rise into the U.S. Open for a vertical move for 100 pips straight down. So again, I want to emphasize my process. The lower high is a dead giveaway in this case. Whenever you get a lower high, that's a dead giveaway heading in the timing window that they're going to hit the stops. Consolidation, hit the stops, drop. The red car. Now I've talked about creeping trends Creeping trends will resolve themselves in one of two ways. They will go vertical from a squeeze in the opposite direction, or they will blow off in the direction of the creep. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, go study Bill McLaren, another mentor, 40 years in Wall Street. So coming back to some of the emails I get about the, the, this is so-and-so's concept and blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. This has been around since the beginning of markets. You've been misled. There's nothing new under the sun. Go read those classical charting textbooks. They're 100 years old. There is nothing new under the sun. You're in the matrix if you're in here trying to catch the moves. Now, I know there's traders that won't like that, but I'm telling you what my approach is so that when I get the same questions over and over again, I'm going to come back with one question to you. What are you looking for? Now, creeping trend down. We have a long trade from Wednesday. That's a breakout trade. So we had somebody long. It's a 15-minute chart. We have somebody long, and I've talked about looking for breakout trades on your daily charts, levels where the market has gone vertical, and they're in the money. The trader that went long here has had no heat on their trade. Creeping trend down. This is a specific setup, but we have a pump and dump into the close. So we have the previous day's low. We have a gap, a space gap. This trader's in the money. So um to me, we're, it's Friday. We'll make it green. We'll make it big because that is where the money is. That's the money. Now, coming back to my approach to the markets. There's my low. We have a creeping trend down. What does that tell you? We're trading back up into the high. We have a one push, two push stop hunt pin above the high. Back up into level three. If you're not sure what level three is, count how many levels of rise. Uh, and right into the session open there's our rectangle again we're on the third level of rise so if we come back to the previous day's low 25 25 and another third level of 25 we've locked in the high in that first two hours then gone into consolidation lower peaks inside towards the end of that first hour this is a squeeze blowing out through the low, pump and dump, but understanding the rationale as to going after the money, but also triggering breakout traders at the low of the day, getting shorts in, hitting the stops, and pulling back and going sideways now at the low of the day. Breakout traders are sitting there at neutral. we still got short traders in the money, but the market has gone down to hit the money. This is a setup on the rollover, pump and dump into the close, rollover for the vertical move 
back into profitable traders out of a creeping trend down. So I find it interesting, you know, there's always one or two and it's the same one or two. And my question to you is, do you want to be in the matrix? Because obviously if you're, you, uh, there's two things, you're either frustrated and you think it can't be done, but you refuse to do anything different, but you're still on my channel. So uh, I'm not sure what to tell you. You can focus on the matrix or you can build your playbook and look for the red car. So not everybody's going to want to short. Not everybody's going to, going to want to do the pump and dump. Some traders want to just be trend traders and look for certain types of trend setups. Figure out where your best, what you trade the best, what your times are for available for trading, uh, how you're going to duplicate and find the instruments that are going to give you the best setups. Why do you think I trade gold, oil, NASDAQ, S&P the most? Because they do the same things over and over and over again. And for the people who, you know, want to be trend traders and just trade trends, um, which, you know, I'm always trying to align myself with the larger trend, but the, the person who said they've, you know, they said to me, I've never met a profitable reversal trader and blah, 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 blah. I don't even care. I, you know, who, you know, or what, you know, I'm assuming you're very well educated. You're a smart guy and you're frustrated. So, my question then is, is I hope you've been trading the Japanese yen. And if not, why not? Because that is the best massive trend that's going right now. You could not, you could do everything wrong. And if you're a trend trader, you should have made a lot of money from this. So if you haven't, why, why haven't you develop an approach that will give you the results that you're after that you can duplicate that is going to be simple. I'm not interested in trying to guess the direction and trade all the moves. I have a very simple approach and I'm looking for the red car. Hopefully that makes sense traders. Hopefully that clarifies a lot of questions. Get Peter's books, follow him on Twitter, simplify your approach to trading. I don't care how you trade. It doesn't matter to me whether you like my video today or you don't, or you don't like my attitude. <laughs> Figure out what works for you. Master it. Get really good at it figure out how you can scale it up in size and then be super flawlessly perfect in executing your strategy. Have a great day. Enjoy the weekend and may the markets go with you.